When a narcissist realizes you'll never come back, this is what they'll do. You've dealt with all of their drama. You've seen all of their games. All of the strange things they do for their own amusement or fun. And you've recognized it's not having a positive effect on you. It's not something that you like or enjoy. It's not good enough for you. It doesn't enhance or improve your life in any way. It doesn't do anything for you. So you're done with it. You're frustrated. You're exhausted. You're tired of going in circles with no progress or resolution. You're tired of being in a relationship that is becoming more and more restrictive or where a series of changes may have been tolerated up to a certain point but then it became too much so now you've decided to walk away you've had enough but what will the narcissist do when they realize you'll never come back When the narcissist realizes you'll never come back, they will not be happy about it. Because it means that they have lost control of you. It means that you are no longer under their influence. Because now everything is on your terms. You're making your own decisions and you decided to walk away which is a healthy decision for you. Because the relationship is very toxic and damaging, but it triggers the narcissist. It shocks them. It causes a sudden upsetting disturbance, which is very unpleasant for them. So initially, they will be in denial. They won't accept it. They won't really believe that you're going to leave them because they always thought that you would be there. They're entitled. They believe they have a right to certain privileges or benefits and they often take them for granted. They fail to properly appreciate you as a result of overfamiliarity so they don't even think of you leaving them. It never even crosses their minds. Which is why they do the things that they do. Because they don't presume that you're ever going to muster up the courage to leave them. They think you're eventually going to tolerate and accept the behavior. They think that things are going to be the way that they want them to be. They think they've developed an unbreakable bond. A binding force that cannot be broken. Because they think it is very strong. So they think you're never going to leave. They think they can retain you in a condition or position. They think they can retain their control and influence over you. And make you do whatever they want you to do which is why they will undermine your confidence, self-esteem and motivation to the point where you may feel defeated, hopeless and powerless. It's why they will constantly criticize, belittle, humiliate and bully you because they think it's going to destroy your feeling of determination. They think it's going to crush your spirit and cause you to lose your passion, desire and energy until it takes away your joy in life and your belief and joy in who you are. But they underestimate you. They underestimate your strength, skills, intelligence, and determination. They think they can continue treating you this way and you're not going to do anything about it. Which is why when they realize you're leaving, they will be shocked. They may not reveal this to you, but it will affect them emotionally 
because they were underestimating your determination, resolve and firmness of purpose. They don't understand patience. They don't understand that you were able to accept and tolerate delays, problems and suffering without becoming anxious or annoyed. They lack psychological resilience. They cannot cope mentally or emotionally with minor issues, let alone a true crisis. But what they don't realize is that there is a threshold. There is only so much that you can take before you finally regret. There is a limit of what you can tolerate. There is a point where you can't deal with it anymore, but they don't realize this because they believe that you're just going to tolerate the behavior. They expect you to tolerate it. So they don't really believe that you're going to leave. They think you're just playing a game because maybe you already had opportunities to leave, but you chose to stay. So they think you're always going to choose to stay with them. They've underestimated that there is a limit of what you can tolerate and that when you're done, you're done and there is no going back because they're just going to keep doing the same things again and again and they're never going to change. Which is why they also won't react positively to your decision to leave. They will rage and they will retaliate because they're annoyed that you're leaving them. They feel like you're putting them through unnecessary pain, discomfort and distress. Because in their minds it's like how can you have the audacity to leave them? Which is why they will criticize you. Because they feel like you're doing something that you have no right to do. They expect you to be the way that you were before. They expect you to obey them. And when you don't, they will react with intense anger and they will see it as an opportunity to punish you because they're like toddlers and adult bodies. They have an arrested emotional development, which is why a lot of the things they do seem so childish and immature and it will seem so over the top. It will seem excessive, exaggerated and extreme and you will wonder where this is coming from because you're just trying to protect your sanity and your health but very little of this has anything to do with you. They are responding to unresolved traumas that they experienced in their childhood and they're playing this out with you. Only this time, they want to be on the other end of it. They want to stop you from rejecting or abandoning them. And they want to make you behave that they want you to. Which is why they will be rageful and upset and they will refuse to accept that they have done anything wrong. They will not act in a mature or sensible way. They will not try to resolve it, understand it or come to an agreement. They will not talk to you. And there will not be any open or honest communication. They will become angry and frustrated because you're not doing what you did before. You're not doing what they expect you to do. So they yell and scream. They insult you and put you down. Which just pushes you away even more. It makes you not even care about what they're saying. And they don't really care about anything. They're just trying to get a reaction out of you. They're trying to put you back in the box where they've kept you all of this time. Which is why they will provoke you. And they will try to get you to react to their behavior because normally you do react, you listen and you do exactly what they want you to do. But this time you're not reacting, you're dealing with the problem on your own because they should have dealt with it before. But they fail to do anything about it. So now you realize that you need to be in control because you can't depend on them for anything. All they want is a response but your response is that you're not coming back. Once the narcissist realizes that you're not coming back and you don't respond to temper tantrums, they will try to suck you back into the relationship. 
which is known as hoovering. Where they will orbit around you and make you preoccupied with what they want, but sometimes they will be silent. Which is a form of passive aggressive behavior. They will display indirect resistance, passive hostility, and an avoidance of direct communication. It depends on how badly you bruise their ego by rejecting them. That typically determines whether or not they will hoover you. So they will come back once all of their anger, rage and shock has gradually disappeared. And then they will make false promises to change. They will act like they're going to be the person you always wanted them to be. And if they have to, they may even apologize. But it's all just to pull you back into the cycle of abuse again. It's not because they realize that they have made a mistake. It's not because they want you back. They only care about the benefits or conveniences. They want their narcissistic supply. And that is the only reason why they will hoover you. They will portray it as though you do mean something to them. But if it was genuine, then they would have made a change. They don't change. Instead, they play on your emotions. They encourage and make unfair use of your feelings in order to give themselves an advantage. They will try to become whoever they think you need them to be. But they were never that before. And all of that time, it was what you wanted. And they purposely did not give that to you. It's only when you have no patience left that they finally become who you wanted them to be and it's done purposely and intentionally. They knew all along what you wanted and expected of them which is how they suddenly shift and adapt their behavior in a certain way to get the reaction they want from you because they are manipulating you. And they will also play the victim. They will try to shift your perspective by getting you to question your interpretation of past events so that they can paint you as the perpetrator. They will say that it was all your fault. They will say that you made them do it. They will convince you that you were to blame and that you should stay with them to help them because they are the only one for you and you are the only one for them and you're never going to find anything better. But if that doesn't work, they will play the victim. They will try to make you feel bad for them. They will guilt trip you. They will play on your empathy because they know that you have a heart. They know that you have the emotional capacity to feel sorry for them. So they will seek sympathy from you. And they will seek sympathy from other people as well. And it's not because they need people's feelings of pity and sorrow. They actually hate to be seen as being weak or helpless. It's humiliating and degrading to them. It injures their pride and dignity. But they will make people feel sorry for them. Because they know that it will stir people's sympathy and make them decide to help. And that's what they want. They want people's support and cooperation. And once they've got it, they will then use those people to criticize you and to make you ineffective so that it makes them look like the victim, as though they did the best they could for you. But you just weren't having it. You were completely unwilling and you refused. So then it really makes you look like the problem. And now they're just moving on from it. They're empowering themselves after you mistreated and disregarded them. And they will act like they don't care about you. Because you're such a horrible person in their eyes. When actually they do care. Which is why they create a scene. It's why they make an uproar. It's why they make a public disturbance or an excited emotional display. It's why they behave in a loud angry way. Because they feel that you are important. And that you are something worth worrying about. Which is why they react emotionally. Because they know they've lost you. They know they've lost your attention and validation. 
which makes them feel inadequate. It makes them feel insufficient for a purpose. Because if they were good enough, then why would you be leaving them? Why would you not want to come back? And no matter what they tell themselves, this is something that always plagues on their minds. It's something that always bothers them, because there is no other explanation for you leaving them. So it resurfaces their flaws and imperfections. It reminds them that they are not good enough for you, which is something that they cannot tolerate. They cannot accept that they do not have desirable or positive qualities. They cannot accept that they are not satisfactory, competent, adequate or suitable. So then they engage in splitting. They detach. Because they tend to think at extremes. They could consider other people and even themselves in all or nothing terms. So they engage in splitting as a defense mechanism. Which then allows them to tolerate difficult and overwhelming emotions. To where they then have to see you as all bad and themselves as all good. They dissociate. They become indifferent. They suddenly have no particular interest, enthusiasm or concern. They're apathetic. They're uninterested, unconcerned, unmoved, unresponsive. They become less sensitive. Because it's reverse psychology. They pull back in order to persuade you to put in more effort because you've already rejected them. So you've caused a narcissistic injury, which has made them feel inadequate, and now they're bitter and resentful. They're holding a grudge to encourage you to do more for them, so they act indifferent. Or they may try to make you do more for them by asking you to do the opposite, and then expecting you to disagree with them. Because they're weak, so they're not going to stand behind what they want. You've already rejected them, and they already feel defeated. So they want you to fight on their behalf. They want you to do the work for them, because they're hurt, and they don't want to feel their emotions. They don't want to accept that they're not wanted. So they split off. They dissociate. They detach themselves from it. Which is always how narcissists respond to people in situations. Because they're cowards, so they won't confront it. And instead, they will expect you to do it for them. They will expect you to make the extra effort on their behalf. But if you don't fall for that, then eventually, they will suffer an emotional breakdown. Because they cannot manage their own emotions. And they've already made a very great effort. They've done everything they can to prevent you from leaving them. They've done it in a very detailed and carefully arranged manner. They've done it very elaborately and on a grand scale. They've strived and endeavoured. They've tried very hard but it just wasn't good enough. So now they will crumble and fall. They will feel extremely anxious, depressed and ashamed. And they may be unable to keep functioning because you've taken control of the situation. You've exposed them by revealing their faults. You've showed them up as the frauds that they are. And they couldn't persuade you with their victim playing. So they've had to accept that no matter what they do, you are not coming back, which is extremely difficult for them to deal with. Because they have a fragile ego, a fragile self. Which is why when things don't go their way, they can't cope. Because they're unable to face and deal with the responsibilities, problems and difficulties successfully and in a calm and adequate manner. Which is why they will experience an emotional breakdown. And they may just isolate themselves. They may just sit alone at home with no desire to do anything. Or they may even fall back on their addictions. They will live a miserable and reckless life. Where they are heedless of danger and all of the consequences of their actions because they've given up. They just don't care anymore. And this is the pivotal moment 
when some narcissists may experience the beginning stages of their healing because they're no longer in denial. They're finally forced to accept the state of things as they actually are. But most narcissists will never make it this far because they will always be an enabler or a new source of supply or they may just find something that inspires their grandiosity. There will always be something that reignites their self-absorption and this will then fuel them to seek out new sources of supply because they lack the emotional strength to be able to deal with their own feelings of inadequacy. So they're going to be seeking attention and validation and if they're going to become resentful, they're going to hold a grudge against you to where they will state that you deserved it and they will justify their actions because once something has re-inspired their grandiosity, they will experience resentment because they will feel like they have been treated unfairly but this mindset will only get them so far because the regard to is that they were having a field day with you they get a lot of pleasure, satisfaction and benefits from being with you so they're going to have to come back to you they will continue hoovering you Thank you for watching. If you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up. Share your thoughts in the comment section. Hit the subscribe button to receive the notifications. If you would like to support the channel, you can donate at paypal.me slash narcsurvivor. You can book a one-on-one -on -one with me on my website. It's narcsurvivor.co.uk. Thank you for watching and I'll talk to you soon.